Hello, it's Sol with more ongoing coverage over the eventual handoff of Curse Forge from Twitch to Overwolf. And after this one, I could, well, hopefully I can wash my hands of it knowing that I brought some information to light and then get back to talking about important stuff like player housing. To summarize, Twitch sold the rights to CurseFort, arguably WoW's most popular add-on repository, to Overwolf, a company that focuses on developing add-on platforms for popular games. Overwolf has long been lambasted as a predatory company with bloated software, and there are receipts to prove its mission as well as its desire to regain trust. And we all know the internet is so, so forgiving. I'm not here to change your mind, just to share some information, and the rest is up to you. The other day I had a chance to ask Uri Marchand, the CEO of Overwolf, questions about the recently launched CurseForge Alpha client and what Overwolf plans to do for users and add-on creators. Today, I managed to also ask questions to the man who runs WoW Up, a rising star among add-on managers with its easy interface, to understand his side of the Overwolf takeover. <laughs> get your overwolf to, you know, that that didn't work well at all. Anyway, there was a bit of a dust up when WoWup made a post on its Patreon that they were told from Overwolf that they could merge itself into Overwolf as one of its apps or to stop using the CurseForge API, which basically meant that WoWup users wouldn't be able to download or update add-ons hosted from the most popular add-on site for WoW. It's a pretty nasty accusation that is not entirely untrue, keyword entirely. Regardless, it turned into a game of internet telephone that, when combined with the natural law that's company equals bad, things got out of hand, and even later clarifications were too little too late. The intent here is to sort of clear the air of any misinformation, which means, spoiler alert, the actual events that took place are much less dramatic than you think. We'll get to that, but first let's get to some starter questions. Yeah, there was an interview. <laughs> I first asked for a brief story, like what got him into WoW and developing something like WoW Up. He writes, I actually got into developing after spending three years in college and realizing I was a terrible graphic designer, see WoW Up, so I pivoted into programming and have been doing that professionally for over a decade, which sounds like forever now. I actually was a big EverQuest player back in the day, and when WoW came out, it was easily the better game to play, and I've just been playing it ever since. I asked what motivated him into developing WoW up, stepping into the arena, so to speak. He writes, I didn't really set out to get into the arena with an add-on manager. I, like many, saw the news of yet another acquisition of the CurseForge system and another new questionably invasive client, and decided I was simply tired of switching and thought making my own would be a fun exercise. One Reddit post later, here we are, with many thousands of daily users and hundreds of feature requests. I asked what his future plans are for the app. His response, people seem to get value out of WoW Up, until 1.19 anyway. Currently all of our focus has been on getting the new 2.0 alpha ready for the beta phase. The new client is a complete rewrite to allow us to run multi-platform for Windows, Mac, and Linux users. So far, the feedback has been very positive on the new look and feel, localization, and a couple new features. We hope to have some bigger features that we'd like to get to work on after 2.0 goes out the door, but don't have a lot of details to offer yet. When I name dropped WoWup the other month in an earlier video, one of the gripes that came from viewers was that WoWup didn't have a Mac version, so this should be very welcome news to those users. It was also discussed in other parts of our conversation that working entirely outside of CurseForge and Overwolf is possible if WoWup were to link directly to GitHub, where many add-on devs host their work anyway. This is great news for those who were concerned that WoWup could be cut off from CurseForge, but more on that later. I asked WoWup to then clarify the events from early October that led to his Patreon post and the subsequent backlash against Overwolf. So he did, writing that initially when Overwolf approached me, they wanted to know if there was any chance of me being open to building on their platform. I was not interested in that, as that's the whole reason WoWup was created in the first place. Basically, at the end of that first interaction, I asked if the takeaway was that I had to integrate, or I would be asked to stop using the API, and the answer was yes. This is a perfectly valid answer, as they own the API, so I take no issue with that. I was obligated to inform my patrons that this interaction happened, and that we would continue to try and build WoW up. From there, it kind of spiraled out of control for a few days. People read that as I had been issued a cease and desist, which is not the case. 
After the weekend of chaos, I had a call with their team where we discussed options on how we can live in harmony going forward, but no concrete answer was reached and that is the last I heard there. Some very important context is missing, but otherwise that just about matches the transcript, transcript that I was given by the Overwolf CEO. Yeah, he has the receipts and everything, which reveal the conversation between WowUp and Gilgamesh, which is Overwolf's mods community manager. WowUp also gave permission for this information to be shared, so here we go. The conversation reveals that Overwolf does have an offer on the table for add-on managers to get a piece of the advertising pie, although no details were put to light. This is just a very early conversation. Once there was an understanding between the two parties, like what is Overwolf trying to do, does WowUp make any money outside of donations, and so on and so forth, WowUp asks if, in summary, the offer is to either join Overwolf by making it part of the Overwolf suite, or lose access to the CurseForge API, to which the answer is, pretty much. But they're also looking into other solutions, like creating another API third parties can pay for, but that seems nonsensical, he says. There's a lot of money to be lost on ads, and charging WowUp a one-time or monthly fee to make up for that isn't ideal for anybody. More importantly though, is that this part of the conversation was much more than simply my way or the highway, and WowUp agrees. Keeping options open is good, and a path to where everyone succeeds would be great. The down on the transcript, which by the way is in European format, is dated October 8th, one day before the Patreon post that WowUp put up. The remainder of the transcript covers October 10th, which later reflects in the October 12th Patreon post that probably didn't make for any positive PR traction because who cares about positive PR? The takeaway, the real takeaway from this conversation is that nothing was going to be finalized or decided here. This was the first interaction from earlier this month. Today, a couple weeks later, both Overwolf and WowUp are being flexible about the near future, and for now at least, they'll coexist. But now I want to circle back to wow up further down the road. As I mentioned, it seems to have plans or ambitions to divorce itself entirely from CurseForge and would instead direct us users to access add-ons through GitHub. For you, the user, the only thing that you'd really see is that instead of seeing Curse, you would see GitHub. Ooh, real scary. The advantage of this is obviously no more working with CurseForge slash Overwolf, but there are challenges, not disadvantages necessarily, but challenges to overcome. WowUp is great for keeping your add-ons up to date, but there's no method of discoverability, meaning searching isn't very good. This is a huge disadvantage for new add-on creators just trying to hit the scene. There's a search field if you know what you're looking for, but there's no sorting or listing by category. The front page of the Get Add-ons tab is basically, it's basically the top 40 of add-ons, including Elf UI and a bunch of its most popular modules. What we need is the ability to search by category and filter by version. This helps finding new add-ons possible, which is the plus for both users and creators. And it would make it much more likely that we would find add-ons that work. On the flip side though, maybe WowUp doesn't need to be an outright replacement for CurseForge. Like how about leveraging CurseForge for the people who want to find stuff while WowUp just maintains it? But I also want to consider add-on authors themselves, the people who make the add-ons that we enjoy. It's unfair to say that I'm paying an add-on creator through exposure alone, that this developer experience will get them a job, so I shouldn't have to pay a dime. But it's arguably worse if we were forced to pay a subscription fee for every add-on that we use, which would make using LVUI both smart and economical. At the moment, there's no right solution, but discussions are ongoing and compromises are hopefully going to be made. There are no bad guys here, just two entities trying to provide a solution. Okay, well... Okay, it's pretty obvious that the Overwolf CEO is taking full advantage of my coverage to be put in a better light. Awkward moment. Yeah, I know. Seriously though, I hope that this coverage was helpful to get folks to understand a little bit more of what goes on in the industry that is WoW add-ons, that WowUp is a great app manager, and that Gilgamesh probably shouldn't have said pretty much. Like, not exactly would have worked. That would have avoided like a lot of trouble. Anyway, please like this video if it was enjoyable and subscribe for more of this and all things Warcraft. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. Thank you.